Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Paleontology Basics. Today we're going to answer the question, where do we find fossils? To answer this question, we're going to rely on a few topics from previous episodes. If you haven't seen those, there's a link to the playlist in the description. So the first thing we need to look at for this is where fossils form. Fossils can form in a few different environments, but have some requirements for them to form. To become a fossil, an organism needs to die in a wet environment, like a lake, river, or swamp, and then be buried quickly. If not buried quickly, the carcass may be eaten by scavengers, destroyed by weathering, or simply decay away. Lakes, rivers, and marine environments often have large amounts of sediment deposition, leading to a very rapid burial. While most creatures that become fossils have hard parts, in extremely rare cases a soft-bodied organism may be preserved, but this takes some special conditions. The soft tissue in an animal's body is both particularly desirable to scavengers and more easily decayed than the hard parts. Soft tissue also doesn't preserve in quite the same way as hard parts like bones or shells. To preserve an organism that lacks hard parts, it must be very quickly preserved in an environment lacking oxygen. This could include places like peat bogs or certain deep marine environments. Even in these rare cases, it only preserves an impression of the animal rather than the animal itself. So that's all well and good knowing where they form, but I'm sure you've all realized we don't really find them on the seafloor or in the bottoms of lakes. We find them all over the place, so what gives? So after the sediments containing the fossils become sedimentary rock, changes in climate as well as tectonic movements can drastically change the environment. As an example, there were several times in history when much of what is now the United States was covered up by a massive saltwater sea. The environment that was in a location when fossils formed there can be drastically different from what it's like now. But if it's so different, how can we tell what it was like back then? The great thing about rocks is they can tell us the story about how the environment has changed over time. Here's a few examples of what some sedimentary rocks can tell us. Limestones tend to form in marine environments, where the waters are calm enough for the tiny particles it's made of to settle out of the water. Sandstone can form in many different locations, but since its grain size is larger than limestone, tends to indicate higher energy environments like coastlines and rivers, where those larger particles will settle out, but the smaller particles that make up the limestone will stay suspended. And then shale is made from clay-rich mud, typically deposited in slow-moving rivers and lakes. So we can tell from the rocks what the environments were like in the distant past when those rocks were forming and the fossils were being deposited. Now the only rock type likely to house fossils is sedimentary rock. Metamorphic rocks may house fossils on very rare occasions, but the intense heat and pressure when forming destroys most fossils and distorts the fossils that it doesn't destroy. Igneous rocks almost never contain fossils, as lava simply burns away any bones which fall into it. But then also, not all sedimentary rocks are equally likely to house fossils. Those three rocks we discussed a moment ago, limestone, sandstone, and shale, are the most likely candidates to house fossils. They typically indicate environments that are suitable for fossil formation. On a side note, sandstone may also form in aeolian, or desert, environments, so it doesn't always indicate a good place to find fossils. There are other things we have to look at for that. And also other sedimentary rocks, such as conglomerate and breccia, may contain fossils, but do so less frequently. So one last thing that ties into environments of formation. Bias in the fossil record. This sounds a little odd, but paleontologists refer to the fossil record as biased, because not every creature has an equal chance of fossilization. As we mentioned earlier, soft-bodied organisms like worms and jellyfish have a very low chance of being preserved, simply because they lack hard parts. Just as well, creatures that lived in harsh environments like deserts, areas with low sediment deposition like mountains, or areas where they would break down quickly like rainforests, don't often get preserved either. This bias in the fossil record means there are certain biomes in the distant past that we actually know very little about. It also prevents us from making any meaningful statements about how common a creature was, because a higher rate of fossilization doesn't necessarily mean a higher population. It could just mean this creature spent more time in wet environments where it would be more likely to be fossilized than this other creature. To sum it all up, we find fossils in sedimentary rocks like limestone, shale, and sandstone that indicate an area that was a good environment for fossil preservation, meaning that in the past that area was a wet place with high sediment deposition rates. But also the fossil record then has a bias in favor of hard-bodied water-dwelling creatures because they are more likely to be preserved. I hope you enjoyed this video. Next week I'm going to make one on the practices in paleontology. 
If you enjoy this kind of content and would like to see more of it, please do leave a like and consider subscribing. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to suggest a topic for a future episode, please leave a comment. Till next time.